welcome back to the Barbecue Network channel. Hope everyone's having a great Shabbat Shalom out there, or a great weekend. And, uh, not sure why the color is how it is on here, but anyway, I thought I would go ahead and, uh, make a video. I'm gonna uh, recommend a movie called Against All Odds. Now, Against All Odds is directed by Taylor Hackford. I believe he's one of the higher up people in the Directors Guild of America. Uh, he's involved in a lot of different, um, you know, issues in Hollywood. He's trying to prevent uh, casting directors from getting recognized for their work, which I don't, I don't know. I think he's kind of out of left field on that one. But um, certainly is a director that's made a lot of movies. Um, off the top of my head, I can't really think of too many. Let me just try to name some of them. Uh, Taylor Hackford. Uh, Blood In, Blood Out, also known as Bound by Honor, and, uh, this movie that I'm mentioning right now, Against All Odds, and I'll try to name some of the other ones maybe in the description if I can think of them, but, uh, I believe that he's married to Helen Mirren, uh, he made one in recent years with her and Joe Pesci, uh, getting him out of retirement, actually, I believe, uh, and it's called, uh, Love Ranch, I believe. I never really saw that one. So, he hasn't really had too many hit movies in recent years. He made one called Parker with Jason Statham and Jennifer Lopez that I actually really enjoyed. But it, it did not perform well at the box office. Um, and he, he's made quite a lot of movies through the years, Taylor Hackford. Um, An Officer and a Gentleman is his best known movie, which he made uh, prior to Against All Odds. Uh, I believe both were made by Columbia Pictures, so he probably had a deal with them after uh, this. Now, um, against all odds, I don't know if you all have ever seen it, but uh, Saul Rubinick does a really great performance, and he does it in uh, True Romance as well, and many other films and TV shows. He played uh, Daphne's fiance on uh, Frasier, uh, really an excellent uh, character for him, and... Um, some of the best parts of the Frasier TV show in that era. So, uh, always really do like Saul Rubinek as a performer on screen. Um, Jeff Bridges is the star of this movie, and he looks, uh, if he looks familiar to it, you in it, if you've seen Tron Legacy, there's a reason why. They use his likeness as how he looks and against all odds to do the computer generated look for him in Tron Legacy. Uh, What's the standout of the movie is uh, Rachel Ward. She's just so beautiful in the movie. It's hard to believe that she was never really in any other really big movies after that. Um, and also James Woods. James Woods gives one of his best performances. If not his best, I don't know. It's up for debate. But obviously people know, uh, you know, he's, um, I don't know, he's done some reputational damage in recent years, I guess, online and some of the things he's been accused of and stuff like that. But... I don't know any of it to be true or not true. Um, in fact, he was actually a really cool person when I met him. So, um, seems like he's someone that speaks his mind and all that. So, uh, for anyone that's around my age or older, um, there's a sitcom called Webster. And the father from Webster, Alex Karras, famous football player as well, he plays a very key role in this movie. So all that being said, uh, I've gone over who's in the film. There's also Jane Wyman. She's a you know old actor from the 40s, 50s, and also Richard Widmark, I believe, is in this film as well. So very notable as far as the older generation and younger generation at the time. Really a stylish movie. Great cars in the movie. Um, great you know places they visit in Mexico. Uh, they go to some rural parts of Mexico that had never been filmed. Oh, it's great. So, it's really impressive. Um, the car chase, or when they're kind of just fucking around in their cars, driving around Sunset Boulevard. It's one of my, uh, I mean, it's, whether someone likes this movie or not, they've got to love that scene. It's an awesome sequence. Um, so, basically, it's about a wide receiver, played by Jeff Bridges, of this uh, L.A. sports team. And they're trying to build a new stadium and all this, so... Um, they need to get the team better, and they, so they end up cutting him. And then uh, the owners have his daughter, and she's all like on the lam or whatever. 
and they don't want her to be a scandal in case they want to build a new stadium and get proper financing. So they basically paid Jeff Bridges, a former wide receiver, to go be a detective to go track down the daughter uh, because she's been going off and making out with uh, James Woods, and he's you know like a nightclub owner who's really seedy and all this shit. So uh, he goes down to Mexico, basically has the time of his life banging the shit out of Rachel Ward because she's hot as fuck. And, um, you know, the movie goes on from there. It's definitely a noir. There's a lot more to it than what it seems. And, uh, I really liked the movie at first. The first couple of scenes, he's looking for this chick with long hair. So he basically goes up to all these chicks on the beach. I'm watching this part right now. And he tries to, like, hey, be like, hey, what's up? And they all think that he's just, like, staring at their tits and shit. So, um, you know, he's looking for this lady with long hair and she ends up having short hair. So and basically a lot of stuff happens in Mexico and then when he comes back to California, uh, the plot takes some more turns and I definitely don't want to reveal too much about the movie. I feel it's a uh, good movie, especially if you've never seen it, to let it kind of play out. Um, I'm not sure if it's based on an old movie. It may be, but it's definitely a very familiar story in noir, mystery, thriller land, you know. Um, I highly recommend the movie, though. Uh it has two commentary tracks on it. Both I found to be pretty informative. But when you see the Taylor Hackford commentary track with the screenwriter, you can see the kind of personality Taylor Hackford has. He's a very, um, you know, being an alpha male myself, he's t like to a, a far extent where he's kind of actually diminishing what the writer did and all that. So you can understand why he doesn't like casting directors and all that because he probably feels... Hey, I, I'm the one that cast Richard Gere and Officer and a Gentleman. I'm the one that cast Deborah Winger. I'm the one that cast Lou Gossett Jr. And all that. So he takes that kind of stuff personally. Which, I'm sure there was more to it than just him casting it all on its own. Uh, but that being said, you know, everyone's got their right to their opinion. And uh, he's a pretty darn good filmmaker. I'm not going to say he's great or anything. But he's made some movies that I enjoy. And uh, I would go ahead and check out all of Taylor Hackford's uh, filmography if you guys want. Especially if you enjoy this one. Another one I just thought of that he did was that poker one with Eric Bana. I believe it was called Lucky You. And it starred Eric, Eric Bana and um, Drew Barrymore. I believe that was it. I don't think it was two for the money. I, you know, two poker movies or two big gambling movies in that 2000s to 2010 era. I believe he did Lucky You. Um, that being said, you know, Rachel Ward went on to marry. Um, uh, Brian Brown from Cocktail and the FX movies. Uh, and um, she has a daughter named Matilda. And uh, she's one hot piece of ass as well. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Rachel Ward, uh, very, very beautiful woman here in, these, in this movie. And there's reason enough to check the movie out. All right, everyone out there, have a wonderful evening and Shabbat Shalom. And I uh, hope you enjoy Against All Odds if you get around to watching it. Thanks.